This is their favorite question and this is their first question. Where is Allah? No Sahabi ever asked anybody anywhere, where is Allah? Everything else is bidah, but the biggest bidah of all, you know, all these youngsters, mashallah, commit day and night. Seventh heaven is there, but that's only for those people who are there. For those who are here, the arsh is down there. So is the arsh there or is the arsh there? We begin in the name of Allah and we thank Him and praise Him and glorify Him. We seek His forgiveness and we ask Him to enlighten our hearts and to fill our hearts with His love, love for His beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and to guide us all to the right path and to keep us on Islam as long as we live. And when our time comes to leave this world, may He take us away on Iman and may Allah Rabbul Alameen save us and may Allah keep us, keep our hearts on the right path and save us us from our hearts being distracted away from the right path. Many people, Allah gives them hidayat, but there comes a stage and when their hearts flip. So Allah has ordered us to make a dua, Rabbana la tuzil qulubana ba'da id hadaytana. Ya Allah, don't bend our hearts towards the wrong path after you've given us hidayat. Uh, so sometimes Allah gives hidayat to some people and then some people having walked on the straight path then wander astray. Uh, so it's very important for people to understand their iman and be cautious and understand where things can go wrong and try and save themselves from being led astray. <coughs> and this ayat which I have recited, uh, Allah has mentioned this with relation to Ramadan at the end of Ramadan. Uh, Allah says, وَإِذَا سَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي When people ask you about me, فَإِنِّي قريب. I am near. Yeah. How near? Allah says in the Quran in another place, نَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِمْ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ I'm closer to people than their own jugular veins. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْسِرُونَ Allah says, I'm closer to people. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْسِرُونَ But you can't see. Uh, how close Allah is to us, Allah is very close to us. And uh, this closeness and nearness, uh, we can never truly understand. In Surah Ali Imran, Allah has revealed a verse in which Allah says, Huwallazi anzal alaykal kitab. Allah has revealed the book, Minhu ayatum muhkamat. There are very clear ayats in there. Many ayats in the Quran, or in fact, most verses in the Quran and most teachings are clear and precise. وَأُخَرُوا uh, مُتَشَابِهَاتِ There are other <coughs> verses, there are other concepts which are ambiguous. mutashabihat, <laughs> Unclear, complicated. Uh, they are not easy for people to understand. Something which is clear like established salat. Uh, fast, pay zakat, do hajj, don't lie, don't commit zina, all these things. These are clear for people to understand. Allah has mentioned about Jannah, about Jahannam, about Qiyamat, about angels, all sorts of issues. Uh, they are not complicated, they are clear. But there are many, there are some things at least, which Allah says, وَأُخَرُوا مُتَشَابِهَا They are ambiguous. Uh, you can't understand them. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ those people whose hearts have rust, corruption, uh, they are bent. زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ بِتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَبِتِغَاءَ تَعْوِيلِ Those people pursue and follow a path of interpreting those verses and issues in a manner which they desire and they cause fitna. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ those people whose hearts are corrupt, فَيَتَّبِعُونَ They follow مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْ هُبْتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ What resembles uh, causing fitna in the interpretation of those verses. وَالرَّاسِ uh, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Those ambiguous, undefined, unclear issues, they are such وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ No one knows the true meaning and implication but Allah. وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ Many people, they have very little knowledge, especially in our time and age. 
Their knowledge is surface knowledge and they have information. They know words. But how deep those words apply and imply, they have no clue. And their knowledge is merely surface knowledge of words, but to the depths of concept they can never ever try. They don't even want to understand. They have blindly in parrot fashion heard and then learnt uh, a few basic concepts which are just skim the surface and as a result wherever they go they cause fitna, they cause confusion and they cause disunity and they cause havoc. And Allah says, وَالْرَاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ There are people who are very deeply knowledged, oceans of knowledge, mountains of knowledge. Uh, and Sahaba were such people. كَانُوا أَبَرَّهَا قُلُوبًا وَأَعْمَقَهَا عِلْمًا وَأَقَلَّهَا تَكَلُّفًا They had the deepest of the knowledge and the purest of the hearts. And in no hadith anywhere, there is only one incident of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in which the Prophet asked a slave girl, where is Allah? And she pointed to the heavens. Otherwise, apart from this one incident, no sahabi ever asked a tabi. And no sahabi ever asked another sahabi, where is Allah? But now, every other young man going to universities and caught up in the Salafi fitna, the first thing he asks people, where is Allah? Because your aqidah is so important. Without your aqidah, nothing is acceptable. And hence, in aqidah, the most important thing is your belief in Allah. So what do you believe in Allah? Where is Allah? This is an innovate, this is a bidah. And this in itself is such a fitna, no sahabi ever asked anybody anywhere, where is Allah? And then people going around causing fitna, well Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked the slave girl, there is ulama have given a special reason because Rasulullah asked that slave girl, because she was affiliated with people who used to worship idols, and their concept of God was of idols who were in front of them, this slave girl, and if you know a young slave girl, her intelligence, understanding is very limited. And so in order for her to differentiate between these man-made goddesses and godlings and the one almighty Allah, Rabbul Arsh al Azim, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked her to see if she believed in the real Allah or in other gods. And when she referred to the heavens, the Prophet said was satisfied that she doesn't believe in idols. Her concept of Allah is one who is most high and sublime and supreme. Otherwise, after this incident, the Prophet never asked Abu Bakr, he never asked Umar, he never asked Usman or Ali, Talha, Saad, Sayyid, Zubair, Abdullah bin Masood, Abu Darda, anybody else. Sahaba never asked any tabi'i, where is Allah? So the people who ask other people, where is Allah? They are going against the practice of Sahaba and all the pious ancestors. Imam Malik rahimahullah was asked, what is istawa ala l-arsh? Now before I go into that, now Allah Rabbul Alameen, what we believe regarding Allah. In Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has forbidden us from contemplating about Allah. What is Allah? Who is Allah? What's Allah like? What's Allah's nature? Because when you think about Allah, your minds and our minds, the minds of all the people of the world, don't have that capacity and ability to think about Allah and to know and comprehend Allah. Allah is what they refer to, wara'ul wara, beyond anything you can imagine. And the big thing about Allah, Allah Himself, laysa kamithlihi shay, there is nothing like Allah. If there is anything has an image, has a size, dimension, Allah is not that. When you have, you know in English they say imagination. When you imagine, what does imagination mean? Imagination means in your mind you form an image. When you imagine you are on the seaside, so in your mind you form an image of the seaside and you picture something on the seaside. Imagine you're on Mars. So what will happen in your mind? You'll form an image. 
of what Mars is like, whatever from your knowledge or experience what you have, and then you'll picture that in your mind, that's your imagination. So if you try and imagine Allah, whatever image comes to your mind, Allah is not that. Allah is wara'ul wara. Whatever image you can form of Allah, that is not Allah. And you cannot comprehend Allah. And even in these wildest imaginations, so Rasulullah has forbidden people about thinking about Allah Himself. Rather, the Prophet said, think about the Qudrat of Allah, His Makhluq. Uh, think about the heavens and the earth. Uh, think about the animals, the mountains, the rivers, the trees, the ocean. Hence, in the Quran, Allah has invited us uh, to think. Awalam yasiru fil ardi fayanzuru. Look around and see, see the creation of Allah. And from looking at the creation of Allah, then you will be able to appreciate how the glory, the power, the qudrat, the authority of Allah. And hence, become afraid of Allah and believe in Him and fear Him and obey Him. But if you try and imagine what Allah is like, and you try, then shaitan will lead you astray and will leave you confused and probably lead you astray and you'll end up even losing your iman. But Allah is Allah. What does Allah say about Himself? What is He? Number one, Allah is Qul Hu Allah Wa Had. He's the only one of His kind. He's absolute Allah Samad, absolutely independent. He doesn't beget, nor was He begotten, and there is nothing like Allah. There is Allah, He's our Khaliq, and everything else is Makhluq. Allah says about Himself, Laysa Kamithlihi Shay, there is nothing like Allah. If there is something, Allah is not like that. So whatever is common to makhluk or any definition you can fit onto any creation, you cannot fit those definitions upon Allah. That's what Allah says in the Quran. Laysa kamithlihi shay. There is nothing like Allah. What does Allah say? What else does Allah say about Himself? Allah says, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. وَهُوَ الَّذِي فِي السَّمَاءِ إِلَاهٌ وَفِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَاهٌ He is the Lord in the heavens and in the earth. Allah created in the beginning. هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْأَرْضَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ When there was nothing, Allah was there. There will come a time when there will be nothing, Allah will be there. Everything else, including arsh, Kursi, Loh, Mahfuz, and everything is what is referred to in Aqaid as Hadith. Hadith means created. Everything isn't from beginning. Only Allah is from the beginning. When there was nothing, Allah was always there. Allah will always be there. Everything else has been created by Allah. Allah created the earth in two days. هو الذي خلق الأرض في يومين وتجعلون له أنداد ذلك رب العالمين وجعل في الرواسية من فوقها وبارك فيها وقدر فيها أقواتها في أربعة أيام. In two days Allah created the earth. Then in the next two days Allah put the rivers, the mountains, the trees, the ocean, and everything else in place. That made four days. And then Allah says ثم استوى إلى السماء. Then Allah turned to the heavens. وَهِيَ دُخَانٌ And it was a cloud or a smoke. فَقَالَ لَهَا وَلِلْأَرْضِ اِتِيَا تَوَنْ أَوْ كَرْهَا قَالَتَا أَتَيْنَا طَائِعِينَ فَقَضَاهُنَّ سَبْعَ سَمَاوَاتِ Then Allah turned the heavens into seven heavens. In another place Allah says, اللَّهُ الَّذِي خَلَقَ سَبْعَ سَمَاوَاتِ وَمِنَ الْأَرْضِ مِثْلَهُنَّ Allah has created the seven heavens and seven earths. So there are seven heavens and seven earths. And Allah's arsh is on top of the seventh heaven. And then Allah says in, in eight places in the Quran, how many? Eight. eight places in the Quran, Allah says, ثم استوى either. In the first sipara, in the first Jusura Baqarah, Allah says, هو الذي خلق لكم ما في الأرض جميعا. He is the Lord who created everything in this world for you. ثم استوى إلى السماء. And then He turned to the heavens. In the eighth juz, Allah says, "Inna Rabbakum Allahu Ladi Khalaq al-Samawati wal-Arda fi sitati ayyamin thumma stawa ala l-arsh." Your Lord is Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days and then turned to the arsh. The word used is "thumma stawa," then turned. Istawa in Arabic does not mean to be sitting on; it means to turn. 
to turn to, to put right, and to adjust or, or sort out. ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَا Then turn to the heavens. In the 11th use in Surah Yunus in the beginning Allah says, إِنَّ رَبَّكُمُ اللَّهُ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ After creating the heavens and earth in six days, Allah turned to the arsh, يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ Why? To manipulate a face. Allah wanted to sort out whatever Allah wanted to sort out. Same thing Allah says in Surah Al-Rad, in the 13th juice, in the beginning. إِنَّ رَبَّكُمُ اللَّهُ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْأَرْشِ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ Again the same thing. First Sipara, 8th Sipara, 11th Surah Yunus, Surah Rad, and then Allah says in Surah Taha, in the 16th juice. Taha, مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى Allah says, I haven't sent the Qur'an to, to humiliate you or, to, or, or whatever to impose upon you and to, to, to give you problems. تَنزِيلًا مِمَّنْ خَلَقَ الْأَرْضَ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ الْعُلَىٰ uh, This has been revealed from him who created the heavens and the earth and is high. الرَّحْمَانُ عَلَى الْعَرْشِ اسْتَوَىٰ Created the heavens and the earth and then turned to the Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa, the most merciful, upon the earth, upon the Arsh, then turned. Then Allah talks about it in the 21st you surah of Alif Lam Mim Sajda. هو الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش يدبر الأمر. Allah created the heavens and the earth in six days, then turned to the Arsh. And then in again in Surah Hamim Sajda the same thing. Thumastawa ila samai wa hiya dukhanun. Allah made the earth in, in, in two days, in another two days, put everything in place, then turned to the arsh. Thumastawa. Then Allah turned to the arsh. And then in Surah Hadid, in the 27th juice, Allah says, Huwa ladi khalaqa samawati wa larda fi sittati ayyamin, thumastawa ala larsh. Allah created the heavens and the earth in six days, then turned to the arsh. Eight places. First Jews, eighth Jews, eleventh Jews, thirteenth Jews, sixteenth Jews, twenty-first Jews, twenty-fourth Jews, and twenty-seventh Jews. Surah Hadith. All eight places Allah has referred turning to the Arsh after Allah made the heavens and the earth for the first time. You understand? That turning to the Arsh every Instance mentioned in the Quran in those eight places where Allah makes turning to the arsh is every one of them is with reference to the first time Allah made the heavens and the earth. Why? Because heavens and the earth have just been created, things need sorting out. Allah can do it with Amri. Allah didn't need six days. Allah could have done it with Amri, could be, and everything would have been. But Allah's Qudrat. Allah's hikmat, Allah made everything in six days slowly and then wanted and then turned to the arsh. Now in Arabic, in Arabic, like any other language, you say, you know, a phrase is clear, the man is on the chair. He's sitting on the chair. Jalisun ala al kursi. If Allah was on the arsh, Allah would have said, Ar Rahmanu ala al arsh. Allahu ala al-arsh, Allah is on the arsh, Ar-Rahman is on the arsh. But Allah hasn't just said that even in one place. Every time Allah says, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-arsh istawa, with reference to the past, and every one of those instances is after the first creation. So Allah turned to the arsh according to the Quran, Every time it makes mention, the first time Allah created the heavens and the earth, then Allah turned to the arsh. Nowhere does it say Allah is confined to the arsh. Now, there's a difference between us and Allah, in the sense human and all creation have dimensions. Dimensions in terms of space and time. I'm sitting here, I'm not there. I'm only here, nowhere else in the universe. This is our weakness, our limitations. I was born on the 21st of May. Before that, I did not exist in this world. The day I die, after that, I will not be here anymore. So we have existence, dimensions, limits in terms of space and time. Allah doesn't have dimensions. This is the thing Allah says in the Qur'an, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ there is nothing like Allah. So if Allah is on the arsh, 
and not hair, that means Allah has dimensions. And Allah is not like any makhluk. Because Allah says about Himself, there is nothing like Allah. Now Allah doesn't say only in the Quran, Allah is on the arsh. There are many other places Allah makes other reference to where Allah is. Allah says in this verse, in Surah Baqarah, with reference to Ramadan at the end, Allah says, after all this, وَإِذَا سَلَكَ ibadi anni, When the people ask you about me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am very, I am near. There are other places Allah says, when people ask you about me. Yes, when people ask you. Yes, alunaka. Yes, alunaka means people ask you. And Allah says, yes, alunaka. When people ask you about kiamat, about menses, about the honorable month. Yes, alunaka and shahr al-haram. Qul, Allah says, tell them. When people ask you about the menses, women's monthly cycles. Qul. Yes, alunaka and isa. People ask you about kiamat. Qul, tell them. But in here, when Allah is telling people, when Allah says, when people ask you about me, Allah doesn't say tell them. When people ask you about me, Allah says, I am there. You know, there is no need for them to ask you, I am there. For inni qareeb, Allah says, I am near. Now people say, no, 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 Allah is on the arsh. When Allah says Allah is near, that means with knowledge and qudrat. There isn't a single place in the Quran or in Hadith where Rasulullah said, when Allah says Allah is near, then it he means with his qudrat and knowledge. Rasulullah didn't say that. Allah didn't say that. This is what people say. When Imam Abu Hanifa or Imam Shafi or Imam Malik, brother, I'm telling you what Allah, Rasulullah said and you telling me what Imam said. Well, I'm telling you what Allah has said and you telling me what others are saying. وَإِذَا سَلَكَ عِبَادِي أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Allah says when people ask you about me, with response to other questions, Allah says tell them with response to Allah Himself. Because people are not asking questions about what to do. Allah says they are asking you about me. I am near, I am there. Then Allah says, وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ Allah is with you wherever you are. Allah is with you wherever. Huwa, huwa means He. And the people say, it means Allah's knowledge and Qudrat. In which language of the world does He means His knowledge and Qudrat? Every language He means that person. Huwa ma'akum. He is with you. He is with you. That means in body, in soul. He. Pronoun. Did Allah not know what else to say better to make things clear? When Allah used the word huwa, huwa means he is. So didn't Allah know people will cause interpretation, confusion, other people will argue. So let me make things clear for them. Allah will say, you are in my knowledge wherever you are, uh, in my knowledge and you are under my control. Allah doesn't say that. Allah says, Huwa ma'akum aina ma'akum. He is with you wherever you are. In the first sifar, Allah says, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِقُ وَالْمَغْرِبُ For Allah are the heavens and the earth. Is the east and the west. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِقُ وَالْمَغْرِبُ For Allah is the east and the west. فَأَيْنَ مَا تُوَلُّوا Wherever you go, ثُمَّ وَجْهُ فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ Wherever you go, where, whichever way you turn, you will find the face of your Lord. How many, do you know how many people there are in the world presently? Six billion, Six billion people. Okay, only two billion, or say only one billion are Muslims. Or three, because only the Muslims read Quran, huh? or they believe in the Quran. Other people don't believe in the Quran, so they won't read it, they won't bother. So now, when the one billion Muslims Everyone turning in different places. Whichever way you turn, Allah says, you will find my face. People in England are turning in these directions. So if you turn this way, you turn this way, Allah's face is there, Allah's face is there. How many faces does Allah have? Does Allah have a billion faces? Absolutely not. So Allah says, So couldn't Allah have made things clear? Because this is regarding Allah. This is regarding your belief. Why is Allah trying to confuse? Is Allah trying to confuse us deliberately? No. And so these things are those mutashabihat. 
ambiguous issues which are beyond our understanding and we should not indulge in them. Sahaba didn't used to ever indulge in them, but now sadly and Allahu Akbar foolishly, every, every other youngster is being confused by the so-called Salafi brothers. The first question they ask, where is Allah? If your aqidah is improper, brother, there's no, there's no point in praying. There's no point in fasting because your aqidah is your iman. If your aqidah is not proper, then Allah doesn't care about anything. So what do you believe about Allah? Where is Allah? Brother, a Muslim, any, anybody has this notion that Allah is with me everywhere. But if is Allah with you ever? Is He in the toilet? Astaghfir, how dare you say that question foolishly, stupidly, Allah is in the toilet. Well, if, and when a husband and a wife make love, is Allah with you in the bed? If Allah is everywhere, He's with you in bed. Is He with you in bed? So now this brother feels confused. How can I say Allah is with me in the toilet? How can I say when me and my wife are making love, how Allah is with us in bed? Astaghfirullah. And so he said, no brother, Allah is on the earth. But Allah doesn't say Allah is on the earth. Allah says every time in those eight places with reference to only the first time Allah made the heavens and the earth, did Allah turn to the earth. Then Allah says in the Quran in Surah Mujadala 28th Jews. Alam tara anna Allah ya'lamu ma fi samawati wa ma fi l-ard. Do you not know that, did you not see, Allah knows everything in the heavens and the earth. Wherever there are people, ma yakunu min najwa thalathatin illa huwa rabi'uhum. Wherever there are three people, they have a meeting. The fourth one is Allah, illa huwa. Allah is the fourth one. He is the fourth one. Allah doesn't say, when three of you sit down, Allah can see you and Allah's knowledge is, you are in Allah's knowledge, in His vision and you are under His radar. Allah doesn't say that. Allah says, He is with you, the fourth one. وَلَا خَمْسَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ سَادِسُهُمْ Wherever five of you gather, He is the sixth. Then Allah says, وَلَا أَدْنَى مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَلَا أَكْثَرْ No more, no less. In other words, nobody else is with you everywhere, but Allah is with you everywhere. Wala adna min dhalika, wala akthar, no less, no more. Allah is definitely with you, and nobody else is with you everywhere. So Allah is with you everywhere. Is He in the toilet with you when you go to the toilet? What a foolish question to ask. Did Sahaba ever, ever, when they used to preach about Allah, did anybody ever say to a new Muslim, Brother, mashallah, you become a Muslim now, what do you believe? And if you ask not just Muslims, if you ask anybody, Christians, Jews, Hindus, you know, what their concept is regarding God, where is God? It's in human nature that God is with you wherever you are. You ask any Christian, you ask any Hindu, the, this is in human nature. The Prophet said, Kullu mauludin yuladu ala al-fitra. Every child is born on the nature of Islam. People, the, the people on fitra, uh, the the, the nature that people have, they feel the presence of God and they feel that God is with them wherever they are. And but if somebody says, no, 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 God is on the earth. He's with you only with His knowledge and Qudrat. Okay, if that is your opinion and you say, you, you feel it to be shameful to think that God is in the toilet with you. When you go to the toilet, can God see you or not see you? Is he seeing you or isn't he seeing you? Is he, can he hear you or can't he hear you? Are you not in his vision? So you are, uh, can God see you or not? Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ بَصِيرٍ He's watching everything. So if he's watching everything, then and, and to say, he's watching you in everything you are doing, he can hear you and whatever you are doing is in his knowledge, is in his knowledge, so if you feel that for Allah to be with you there is shameful, and then for Allah to be watching you doing that, isn't that the same thing? Yes. Now, when people, because this is aqidah, and many people, they think, oh, Ar-Rahman, Al-Arsh, Istawa, brother, Astaghfir, this is kufr, this is what Hindus believe and whatever. Aqidah is so, so delicate. And it's so, so complicated. This is why we have been ordered not to indulge in it. None of the Sahaba indulged, indulged in it. Only Rasulullah on one that instant mentioned this issue. And Salafi brothers have got nothing better to do than to confuse people and to, 
and to Allahu Akbar mislead them and cause fitna and big fitna. And this is the all this is their favorite question and this is their first question. Where is Allah? Now it is aqeedah of al sunnah wal jama'ah. When you talk about Allah, the issue is so complicated, people just cannot understand it. Allah has attributes. Allah is Allah's personal name. Allah has attributes. Allah is Rahim, Allah is Alim, Allah is Qadir, Allah is the all doing, Allah is the all seeing, Allah is the all hearing. Now Allah's attributes are part of Allah's personality. Allah's mercy isn't separate from Allah. You understand? A person's strength is within you. You know, you, your strength there is not an external factor. It's part of your personality. Your emotions are a part of your personality. Your ability is a part of your personality. It's not separate to you. The knowledge that you have is a part of you. It's not separate to you. The difference between us and Allah is Allah's knowledge and everything is from beginning till eternity. No one has given Allah his knowledge. No one has given Allah his qudrat. No one has given Allah his mercy. Allah has always had it and Allah will always have it. We acquire it and we can lose it. But when we have it, if a person has strength, it's not in the cupboard. He doesn't lock it up like your car in the garage. You know, you don't take and lock it up in a garage and then go away. When I come back, uh, like Samson, you know Samson and Delilah, <laughs> his strength was in his hair or whatever, when his hair, is, when his hair was cut away, he, he, he lost his strength. Normally, your strength is in your muscles or whatever, and as long as you're alive and fit, that you can use your strength. Your knowledge is within you. Similarly, Allah's attributes are a part of Allah's personality. You understand? Allah's knowledge isn't separate from Allah. The, the attribute of mercy is not Allah. Allah is Allah, but Allah's mercy is a part of Allah's personality. Allah's knowledge is a part of Allah's personality. Allah's vision is a part of Allah's personality. Allah's hearing is a part of Allah's personality. Allah, Allah sees everything, Allah hears everything. So when Allah can see you in the toilet, is that not part of Allah's personality? When husband and wife are in bed, as these brothers foolishly say, and say, no sahabi ever asked anybody, uh, you know, what's your belief regarding Allah? When you are with your wife, is God with you? No. When you go to relieve yourself, uh, is, is God with you there? No sahabi ever asked anybody, and every selfie asked this question to everybody, to confuse them, to mislead them, and to corrupt them. And then they say, well, if, Allah, if that is Allah's personality, Allah's knowledge is a part of Allah's personality, Allah's vision is a part of Allah's personality, if Allah can see you there doing whatever you are doing, so is Allah not there? If Allah is aware of something, Allah sees. Allah sees, Allah hears. And when that vision and when that hearing is a part of Allah's attribute personality and He is with you and Allah says Allah in the Quran, Allah says Allah is with you wherever. So when Allah's vision is there and vision is part of His personality, so does that not imply that Allah, some aspect of Allah is there? How is there? We can never understand. We will never know. This is why we shouldn't talk about it. But I'm addressing this issue because people do talk about it and people do confuse people. And so if Allah's vision is there, Allah can hear you what you are doing in there. And so how does that vision fit in with Allah's personality? Wallahu alam. So you don't talk about it, you just leave it. Now Allah says, some people say, no Allah is on the arsh. Where is the arsh? On top of the seventh heaven. Allah is the all-knowing. Allah knew there will come a time in thousand years ago or whatever people used to consider the earth to be flat. In the Bible, in fact, it says earth is flat and has pillars. Science has proven that false. Now, there's nowhere in the Quran Allah says earth is flat. With time, people have learned the earth is Earth is round. Okay. If the earth, if you imagine the earth to be round, if we are here, suppose on, on any point, if I can have anything round, Okay, I'll just make, suppose this is round, yeah? If we are here, the arsh is in which, uh, the seventh heavens is in which direction? The top, yeah? But the people here, for them, because they are standing upside down according to, yeah? So if they are there, 
Which way is there Arsh? Is, so is the Arsh there or is the Arsh there? So if you imagine that earth is on, the Arsh is on the top, if the Arsh is on the seventh heaven, seventh heaven is there. But that's only for those people who are there. For those who are here, the Arsh is down there. So is the Arsh there or is the Arsh there? So what is there two Arsh? Is there two gods? And for the, okay, for these people the Arsh is there, for these people the Arsh is there, for these people the Arsh is there, for these people the Arsh is there. But there's seven heavens and seven earths. So now under the earth you've got the seventh earth. For so, so what is for them, for these people here, the seventh heaven, for these people that is the seventh earth. That's illogical. So all this means wherever Allah refers to himself as being high, ulama have stated, uh, it means that Allah is most high. And most high in terms of honor, in terms of grace, in terms of dignity, not physical being and physical presence. If you give Allah a physical presence, that is very, very dangerous. Uh, because then you are confining Allah. And you are giving Allah dimensions. And if you give Allah dimensions, you are making Him like makhluk. Allah doesn't have dimensions. Now, if, you, people, if people start to interpret things literally, brother, you know, we've got to take things literally. Subhanallah. If you start taking, nobody takes things literally. Even the selfies, when we say, Allah says in the Quran, Huwa ma'akum aina ma'akum tum, He's with you wherever you are. They make ta'wil of this ayah. They interpret. No, it doesn't mean He is with you. It means He's, not, he's with you with knowledge and qudrat. That's a manipulation of the ayah. That's not what the ayah says. The ayah says, He is with you. The selfies, they say, No, He's with you only with knowledge and qudrat. But that's not what the ayah says. The ayah says, He is with you. The Allah, and then Allah says, wherever which way you turn, Allah's face is there. They said, no, Allah can see you with knowledge and qudr. That's not what the ayat says. The ayat says, Allah's face is there. So if you take things literally, you are giving Allah billions of faces. And then, there's a big, big problem when you take things literally. In the Quran, Allah makes mention of His face. Allah makes mention of His eyes. What is Quran? Quran is Kalamullah. Quran is? Kalamullah means speech, the word of Allah. And, and how, does, how does the word come out? With the mouth. It says, and Allah says, Fazkuruni azkurkum, remember me, I will remember you. And it says, and this is a hadith reported by Imam Bukhari. Fain zakarani fi malain zakartuhu fi malain khayram minu. If you remember Allah in a gathering, Allah will remember you in a gathering. In other words, talk about you. Because when, you, when we're talking about Allah in a gathering, Allah talks about us in another gathering. So Allah is talking. So Allah will have. Allah will have a tongue. He says in hadith, when you come walking towards Allah, Allah comes running. So what do you need to run? Legs. Legs. And it makes mention in the hadith of a qadam foot of Allah on the day of Qiyamah when Allah will start feeling Jahannam and Allah will keep asking, Hal, hal mim mazid, hal mim mazid. Allah will say, Halim talati, have you become filled? Jahannam will say, let them come, bring them on. And keep asking for more and more. Eventually Allah will put his foot in Jahannam and Jahannam will say, enough is enough. So Allah has a foot. Allah, so accordingly, when Allah runs, then, then legs. And then it talks about in the Quran about Allah's hands. Allah's face. So if you put all these things together and you take them literally, where will that make, lead you to? He will make you look like a man. Look like a, and, and on the face, Allah says, فَإِنَّكَ بِآيُنِنَا Surah Tur In the 27th juice, Allah says, you are in front of my eyes. So on the face of Allah, you have eyes. You have face of Allah, hands. You have legs of Allah. You have feet of Allah. And then Allah says in Surah Ar-Rahman, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Everything will perish except the face of your Lord. So if only the face of Allah will remain, what will happen to the rest of Allah? Because Allah says in the Quran, the only thing to remain is Allah's face. Everything else will perish. So what will happen to the rest of Allah? Will it perish? 
Can anybody, any Muslim in his right frame of mind acknowledge and accept that Allah's, Allah's only face will remain, the rest of Allah will perish. Can you accept that? No, Absolutely not. So you will make ta'wil. You will make interpretation in this ayah to say, no, Allah will not perish. What it means, everything else will perish but Allah. But Allah only exempts His face. So you understand the problem. And then, and then, Allah says in one, in, in one place in the Quran, Allah says uh, that فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي Making reference to enemies of Allah Shayateen. Allah says, don't be afraid of them, be afraid of me. فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Fear me if you are true believers. The ayat is clear. Now Allah gives the same message in another ayat in a different way. Then Allah says, this is mentioned in Surah Ali Imran. In the third Jews, why you Allahu nafsa? Allah makes you afraid of His nafs. Now, the way it's translated in, in translations is Allah is making you afraid of Himself. This is what the translation is given. But the wording used in Arabic in two verses in the Quran, why you Allahu nafsa? Allah makes you afraid of His nafs. So does Allah have a nafs? No. Well, Allah is saying, well, you have Allah nafsa. If Allah wanted you to be scared of Him, Allah would have said the other way. So what's Allah trying to say to us? Now if Allah, ha- if Allah doesn't have a nafs, why does Allah say, well, you have Allah nafsa? And if Allah does have a nafs, then kullu nafs in dhaiqatul maut. Every nafs has to taste of death. Will Allah's nafs also die? Will part of Allah experience death? No. Can any Muslim accept that? No. no. Uh, so we will make ta'wil in this. And we will take the translation to mean other that Allah is making you afraid of Himself. But Allah has said, وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ nafsa. There is a problem. And so you will make ta'wil. So if you're making ta'wil in all these other verses, then why not make ta'wil in Ar-Rahman wa al arsh istawa? Allah turned to the arsh when the only reasonable, plausible, acceptable interpretation, Allah has a relationship with the arsh, we can't understand it. And if we mean it to mean that Allah is on the arsh, then there's a problem because we are giving Allah dimensions. <coughs> Just as we say, if you would interpret the, had- the ayats, the verses, these are not da'if hadiths from fazal amal These are verses of the Qur'an. And just as we will have a problem saying uh, that Allah will not perish, we will make ta'wil, so we, and, and we will accept those verses. Similarly, ar-Rahman wa al-Arsh istawa, if we accept it to be literally that and to mean that Allah is on the earth, we've got another big problem because that means if Allah is there and not here, then that means Allah has a dimension and Allah is not like makhluk. So to say and to speak about these things is nothing but fitna. So you just, you, you try and inculcate love of Allah, awareness of Allah, and you see, when people have an, this understanding whereby they distance themselves from Allah, if Allah is on the arsh, arsh is far away from us. Arsh, the arsh has dimensions, yeah? Arsh has dimensions, it's fixed in a space. If it's on top of the seventh heaven, it's not on top of the sixth, fifth, fourth, third, it's not on the, uh, on the earth. Arsh is on top of the seventh heaven. If Allah is on the seventh heaven on top of the Arsh only, so there's a big gap between us and Allah. And the awareness that Allah wants us to have is Allah is with you wherever you are. So that you can be conscious of Allah all the time. You can fear Allah all the time. You can be a friend of Allah. You can feel close to Allah. So that you can love Allah. You can fear Allah and you can obey Allah. Not distance yourself from Allah. You understand brothers? Uh, So this is why in the pious answers, this is just a recent fitna, last 50, 100 odd years. Uh, Imam Malik rahmahullah, when he was asked about where is, uh, you know, about istawa al-arsh, he goes, istawa al-arsh is haq. 
if a person doesn't say it, doesn't believe, Allah said it, so we have to believe in it. It's known, it's mentioned, it's haq. But what it means, nobody knows. Kafiyatuhu majhul wa su'al anhu bid'a. And to question this and discuss this and talk about it is bid'a. Everything else is bid'a, but the biggest bid'a of all, you know, all these youngsters, mashallah, commit day and night, and they call themselves oh, sunnah, sunnah, tawheed. And while this is in itself the biggest bid'a going, talking about where Allah is. So this is big fitna talking about where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. This thing, and then to, to say, brother, is Allah in the toilet? Is Allah with you when you're mating with your wife? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So these are foolish questions to ask. And a lot of people are asking these questions. And it is absolutely foolish and so confusing and intolerable. And they don't know what they are doing. And their supposed scholars are making these allegations. The sort of scholars... Uh, like in Makkah, from Makkah, Imam Shamshad Salafi, Pakistani Salafi, picked up, taken to Jeddah, made a recording, it's on the YouTube, and he's comparing Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmahullah, the, one of the greatest scholars in the history of Islam, about whom Imam Abu Hanifa, rahma, Imam Shafi, rahmahullah, said, Annaso kulluhum ayalu Abi Hanifa fil fiqh, when it comes to understanding of deen, all the people of the world are children in front of Imam Abu Hanifa. And this man has the nerve and the stupidity and the ignorance to compare Imam Abu Hanifa to Musalma Kadhab. You know who Musalma Kadhab was? No, no. Musalma Kadhab was a man who declared himself to be Nabi in the time of Rasulullah. And he sent a proposal to Rasulullah. You are the Nabi of the, of the towns. I am the Nabi of the villages. Let's come to a compromise. And Rasulullah rejected his proposal. In the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he sent Khalid ibn Walid to deal with him. He was chased and he was killed by Wahshi, the same Sahabi who killed Hamza radiallahu who martyred him in the battle of Uhud, he is the same person that threw a spear in Wahshi, uh, in uh, Musaylma Kazab, killing him. And then he would say, with this, with this art or this skill, I killed the best of the men and with Allah's fuzzle and mercy, the worst of the men. He was Musaylma Kazab. And this Salafi scholar is compared, in fact, in fact, I showed the link to the brothers. Did you see the link? Am I lying or am I telling you? The, it's the truth. Huh? He's seen the link the, uh, and the recording. It's an Urdu. It's an Urdu, but it's on YouTube. And he is saying, Na'udhu Billah, Na'udhu Billah. One of the greatest Imams in the world, Shamshad Salafi, is saying, What Musaylma Kazab could not do, Abu Hanifa succeeded. In distorting and corrupting deen. Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahimahullah, presented deen to the Ummah in easy form. There's another Salafi scholar, Medina graduate in Birmingham. He is the Imam of the al the Salafi Masjid, the big markers in Birmingham. And this is where Sheikh Sudais and Shuram come. And every time they come, they go, he's the Imam there. And he's called Imam Abu Hanifa every conceivable insult. The link is on the YouTube. Uh, and they have the nerve, and it is these very brothers spreading this fitna, this fitna, uh, confusing people and misleading people. And then they think they're doing big service to deen, to tawheed and to sunnah. Uh, while in fact they are confusing and misleading people in an issue nobody has ever understood, nobody will ever understood, and nobody can understand, so you don't talk about it. These elders, the pious ancestors never used to talk about it. So we don't talk about it. What we do talk about, Qudrat of Allah. We talk about Allah's mercy. We talk about Allah's forgiveness. We talk about Allah's greatness. So that we can feel near to Allah, not distance ourselves from Allah. You understand brothers? So next time anybody asks you, where is Allah? You know this guy is a real troublemaker, he's a fitna. Ah. So you, may, may Allah save us from It's like talking about the soul as well. You just can't understand. Jazakumullah khair, brothers.
أرجو رضاك يا الله أنت الرحيم يا الله